let's go into our next segment on the principle of restoration through indemnity. And uh, in our uh, the presentation before, we uh, concluded with basically the assertion that the jewel in the crown of the principle of restoration through indemnity is the coming of Christ, the Messiah. Uh, owing to the fact that we did not create the original sin, we inherited it through a dead Adam. Thus, the principle of restoration through indemnity, the reverse course, uh, requires that we inherit life through a living Adam, just as we inherited death through a dead Adam. So um, we want to understand then the... Um, conditions uh, for that to take place. History then is awaiting the coming of a new Adam because the first Adam that we see here fell into death and into sin and thus the entire lineage of the sinful parents is born in sin. Um, so history has been awaiting a new Adam, a living Adam to appear uh, to bring rebirth. And again, the, the idea that we have to be born again as an essential element of salvation, the process of salvation, also again is reflective of the principle of restoration through indemnity. We're going to reverse course. So we were born in death, thus to come back into life, we need to transfer our lineage from the dead Adam to the living. And that process is the process of rebirth. So Christ, the new living Adam, is the agent of that process of rebirth and thus salvation. However, uh, and we know historically that um, uh, Jesus didn't appear until after 4,000 biblical years. So there was a whole process of time that ensued before Jesus actually appeared. And we say that that time period was the period where the foundation for the Messiah had to be established. And we want to try to understand what that foundation is. In other words, there are certain preconditions that have to be achieved before, in fact, God sends the new living Adam into the world to uh, conduct the, the providence, the completion of salvation through the providence of rebirth. So what's going on? What's the meaning of this 4,000 biblical years? And uh, during this 4,000 biblical year period, we see certain figures appear that are recorded in biblical history. Abel, then Noah, we certainly know the story of the flood, and then the stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, Joshua, the period of judges, uh, the period of kings, Saul, David, and Solomon. Uh, we move into the era of the great written prophets, the four major, the twelve minor. And then we, uh, after 400 years from the time of Malachi, uh, God lifts up the last prophet before Jesus to make the final foundation, to make a people prepared for the Lord, uh, the mission of John the Baptist. And so then Christ appears to stand on the foundation, the final foundation that John the Baptist was to provide. So we see this course of all these biblical figures who certainly themselves are not the Messiah, yet we see that God is dealing with them in a very significant way. And uh, it, in now that we understand the, the basic principle of restoration uh, through the reverse course, we can now shed light more deeply on the mission of these central figures. So again, uh, the... The process of indemnity is the reverse course of the process of sin. So Adam, history began with an Adam who was alive. He was not dead when he came into existence. And, and Adam went a certain process when he was uh, um, complying with the word of God. But at a certain point, Adam produced conditions we say bad conditions or conditions of sin. 
And the effect of these conditions was to transform an Adam who had been alive into an Adam who was then in a state of sin and death. So via these bad conditions, whatever they were, and we want to explore those in depth in view of the, in light of the principle of restoration through indemnity, we want to explore what were these conditions that had the sum effect of transforming an Adam who had been alive into an Adam who died and then passed on that death through his seed. And so when we examine the life of the central figures, we should then know that what God is calling them to do ultimately has to do with uh, the process of reversing these bad conditions. And, uh, and that, in other words, that will be the mission of Abel, that will be the mission of Noah. That will be the mission of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Each age, each central figure will be commissioned to reverse through indemnity the bad conditions that changed a living Adam into a dead Adam. And when any of these central figures can accomplish that, then that, in effect, accomplishes the foundation for the Messiah, and we will be able to... Uh, see that Jesus will be born upon that foundation. Uh, if it's not fully accomplished with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the mission will be extended and prolonged to Moses, to ju- through the period of judges, through the period of kings, through the period of prophets, in a, even to the day of John the Baptist. In a sense, and this is a very interesting phenomenon, the mission is the same. So the mission is being passed on from Abel to Noah to Abraham to Isaac to uh, Moses and all the way to John the Baptist. What that causes to take place, because essentially their mission is the same, their responsibility is the same, we're going to find a tremendous amount of parallels exist between all of these central figures. In other words, what Abel is doing will find Moses do. What Moses is doing, we'll see that that Jacob did. And what Jacob and Moses did, we'll see that even Jesus is following a path. That's why he said, the Son of Man can do nothing of his own accord, but that what he see, that in which he sees the Father doing. So what is the central figure's mission? It is to reverse, through indemnity, the same set of bad conditions made by Adam that changed him from a living Adam to... To a dead Adam. And so when that central figure accomplishes those conditions of indemnity, reversing the bad conditions of Adam, that establishes the foundation for the Messiah. And in a symbolic way, it's like reviving one dead Adam into a living Adam. And in substance, it means that on the foundation of these indemnity conditions, then Jesus will appear, Christ will appear, the Messiah, the new living Adam, will come and stand on that foundation to uh, provide the jewel and the crown of the course of restoration through indemnity, which is the process of regeneration and rebirth, and um, uh, i.e. the change of lineage for mankind. So that is the, uh, the process that we're going to examine. So we'll uh, take a break here, and when we come back, uh, we'll, we're going to take a look at what were Adam's bad conditions. Now, we've already studied the fall of man, so we have a good working knowledge of what happened in the Garden of Eden. But we want to really, we really want to take a look at what were the essential failures of Adam, and in, in order to understand that, we have to understand what was Adam's responsibility. And as we understand Adam's responsibility more clearly, we'll be able to assess in very clear terms what were Adam's bad conditions, what were his sins, his bad conditions that transformed him from a living Adam into a dead Adam. And based on that, we will be able then to see a consistent historical pattern 
picked up by each of these central figures whose mission it will be then to reverse those bad conditions through indemnity. And I think that you'll find it will give an incredible light to the history leading up to Jesus. It will shed tremendous light on issues that have been a mystery, uh, mysteries of theology, mysteries of history, uh, since the beginning of time. So uh enjoyed sharing this with you. I hope you'll come back for our next presentation. You have a good day. God bless you. Bye-bye.